George Lucas is the GOAT. Hey everyone, this is Digital Charcuterie. Thanks for stopping by. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We're hoping to reach 4,000 subscribers. Special shout out to all of our new subscribers. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Thank you. We love talking Star Wars, good or bad, right or wrong. We are on a skeleton crew. Obviously, released a pretty kick ass trailer, I thought, the other day. The needle drop wasn't my cup of tea trailer. It wasn't made for me. They've already got my money. They don't have my money. I'm not paying for it. It's on Disney Plus. <laughs> really funny. <laughs> really funny. Uh, what do you mean I'm funny? <laughs> it's, it's funny. You know, you're, it's a good story. It's funny. You're a funny guy. I'm looking forward to Skeleton Crew, though. But I want to talk about something else that came out. I think it was on Halloween night. This article from Variety showed up. <clears throat> George Lucas had this massive Obi-Wan Kenobi twist. And I'm kind of excited about it because I was like, that's pretty badass. So let's check out this article from Variety and talk a little bit about George Lucas's what have been Obi-Wan Kenobi twist. Because what is Star Wars without a twist? We've been saying this for a while on the podcast, right? It's like, like the Empire Strikes Back, Luke, I Am Your Father basically ruined Star Wars. Because now all of a sudden Star Wars always had to have a twist. Always had to have a twist because I am your father, Leia is my sister. Twist after twist, that's what fans expect. And with The Phantom Menace, Lucas was right on board with that. He was about to do it. Baha! But then he decided not to. And the sequels, you know, other than if you didn't know she, who SheVP was, things like that, there's really no major twists in the prequels. Not sequels, in the prequels, I should say. So, yeah, this, I, we're going to talk, we're going to read this article a little bit, a little bit of the article, not the whole thing. I won't bore you with that. But we'll talk about, you know, what I thought of it, you know, because I, I, yeah, I have some thoughts. Here we go. In Variety, they write the following. George Lucas cut a bombshell Star Wars twist from Phantom Menace. Liam Neeson was going to play the real Obi-Wan Kenobi who died. Dun, dun, dun. It's actually kind of cool. Love it or hate it, the Star Wars episode one, The Phantom Menace, is at least widely beloved for its casting of Ewan McGregor as young Obi-Wan Kenobi. A recent interview with Star Wars concept storyboard artist Ian McKaig via StarWars.com to mark the Phantom Menace's 25th anniversary reveals that George Lucas was, was originally planning a bombshell twist for the movie. McGregor's Obi-Wan and Liam Neeson's Qui-Gon were originally swapped, meaning Neeson was playing real Obi-Wan, thus the real Obi-Wan died. For a time, the older Jedi was named Obi-Wan and the younger Jedi was named Qui-Gon, McKaig said. It was very poignant that at the end, as Obi-Wan dies and Qui-Gon defeats Darth Maul and stays with his master as he passes away, he not only takes on his master's quest, but he takes on his name. Qui-Gon becomes Obi-Wan. That's why when you see Alec Guinness in A New Hope, he puts his hood down and goes, Obi-Wan. Now that's a name I've not heard because he's not Obi-Wan, he's Qui-Gon. And right at the end, George changed it. I kind of like it. I do. I don't think it would have worked. I think people would have been baffled and amazed. And, you know, whatever you think of The Phantom Menace, I think it would have been magnified to the umph degree. I don't think people would have been very happy about that. It got me thinking a lot, though, now. Like, imagine, like, Disney-era Star Wars doing something like that. <clears throat> people would be pissed off. But I kind of like this idea. I thought it, I think it's kind of neat. It is poignant, like he said. And it gives new meaning to when we first see Obi-Wan in a new hope at the same time it's kind of like what's the point what's the point it's all like it's, again it's it's that issue of because you had a twist then you got to have a twist now and i think star wars really shouldn't be dependent on the twist nature of it i love the twist don't get me wrong but you shouldn't it shouldn't be dependent of it they should come organically and naturally which i think empire strikes back does i even think the sister twist kind of does as well but when you start to do the mystery box like the sequels then you start digging yourself into a deep deep hole and it's tough to get out of that sometimes and you and again, if you don't know what the point of that plot twist is, then what's the point? But the idea that Obi-Wan was actually Qui-Gon and Qui-Gon was Obi-Wan, that's kind of a neat concept. I, there's a part of me that's like, I would really like to see how that would have played out. How does that play? Like, how does it play out? How do we as an audience accept that and live with that as we're watching the, you know, the prequels and then, and then the original trilogy at the same time? Like, how does that flow into one another? Like, cause, cause, when we when we're so far removed from it, we're twenty five years. Like this was for the twenty fifth anniversary. We were twenty five years removed. Yeah, like it, it's easy to be like, hey, you know, yeah, we, I can accept that, or that's a stupid idea. But in the moment, 
I'm really curious how I would have responded to that. Cause I love the Phantom Menace and I loved it in the theater when I was a kid, I watched that movie in the theater and I was like, and I remember coming out and saying that I think this is my favorite star Wars movie that changed obviously a little bit. And, and, and the sequ- and the prequels are what they are, but that's, it's such a neat concept to me that he was like, this is why he's the goat because he had these ideas. He like his mind. I don't think George Lucas's mind work like normal people or even like normal storytellers. Like he just has this concept and I compare him to, I know everyone hates, but JK Rowling also, like, I feel like they have this natural ability to come up with something simple and then find the complexities within it and bring them out and bring them to life. And and we go along with the flow and they can make things up as they go along. Cause you know, you know, when he made the original trilogy that Obi-Wan was never anyone else, he was Obi-Wan. And I want you to get out of this office right now. And he was Ben Kenobi, Obi-Wan, all that. He was never any, he was never Qui-Gon Jinn when he did that. But I'll bet you in the early drafts when they were coming up with all this in the early writings that it worked to a degree. Obviously there was a reason why he changed it probably because he's like, this is, it's probably unnecessary at the end. Like it's a poignant take sure, but it's also as much as it is, it's also not really Obi-Wan's story, right? It's more Anakin story. It's the story of Anakin. It is Anakin and Obi-Wan's story, but it's heavily more on Anakin. And when you take some of that narrative away from Anakin and you put a little bit more emphasis on Obi-Wan and on Qui-Gon and on the name change, all of a sudden the story kind of evolves into something that it can't be. And the one issue with the prequels that, pro- you know, that could easily have been faced is that this is the story of Darth Vader, but how Anakin becomes Darth Vader. And we start to, to distract from that. Then you get into all of these, these issues. And that's something that I could easily see played out in, in his mind. Other reasons, you know, just confusing the audience is probably a big one. But I look, I think this is really cool. I want to know what you guys think in the comments down below. I think this would have been a lot of fun. I would have been on board with it. Why not? Why not? Can you imagine all the toys? They rebrand all the action figures like Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, blah, 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 blah. I think it could have been a lot of fun. I, this is why I think George Lucas, though, he thinks like nobody else. And he understands his world and his lore like nobody else either. And obviously, he he was advancing it and growing it as time went on. We know that because we saw the Clone Wars. And again, I, you know, the Mortis stuff. And even when he said what he wanted to do about the sequel trilogy, right? His sequel trilogy would have been more about the midi-chlorians and the wills and all that. Even the world before between worlds, which... I'm not quite sure if it's ever been informed of, as to whether or not George Lucas had any involvement in the creation of World Between, Between Worlds or if that was like Filoni's understanding of where George Lucas wanted things to go. But even stuff like that, like you want, you're not going to get this from anybody else. This is in George Lucas's mind. He's got this. He knows Star Wars as well as anybody. And I'm not saying you can't like some of the stuff that or all of the stuff or any of the stuff that Disney's gotten you. And I'm not saying that you should love it all. I'm just saying that he just understands this world that he's created better than anybody else. And that makes me excited. And the, and, and, and information like this is fun to take in. It's fun because we're 25 years removed from this movie. I can't believe it. I had all like the Pepsi and seven up cans and I think mountain, like all these cans with like Jabba the Hutt and Sabalba and Anakin and all of them. They were on. It was so much. The time was so much. It was such a simpler time back then. Then attack of the clones came out and the internet was prevalent and, and the force.com <laughs> Uh, chats or whatever it was just forums it was forums it was a, a nightmare but i think this is cool george lucas once again coming out he is the goat he knows star wars better than anybody if you ever feel like star wars needs help disney you got his phone number give him a call he's got ideas he's got ideas thanks for watching everybody give us a like and subscribe until next time may the force of others be with you Those fresh blocks of pencils i'm all set